Hello everyone, this is Gail, and welcome to my quilt block number two tutorial. Now I did the um, other quilt block, which I've got it wrapped up, but I did the, I've heard people call them that they were tumbling blocks, some called it, um, Let's see, tumbling crazy blocks or whatever. But anyway, we did this one two weeks ago. And it's sitting over here waiting for another cane to come keep it company. And let me just wrap it back up. I want to keep the white as clean as I can. And this time I'm going to do what's called a pinwheel. And, you know, I, w I was looking at quilts and quilt patterns online and noticed that very seldom do they ever use a solid color clay. There's usually, I mean, not clay, a solid color fabric. They usually use a calico or a gingham, something that's got a print to it, or at least a, a, some kind of texture to it. So what I did today is I took the pink and and white or pink and pearl look at that at the end isn't that kind of cool looking where well, I rolled it up but I've rolled that out to fit my extruder this one is a like a blue and green and this is just scrap but I'm going to see if some of this texture, some of this color change, will show up in my extrusion. And then I've got white. And I also have a sheet of white, which I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to need. So I left my white out in case I need to condition some more. But I am going to start by using this this die. It's the largest one I've got that is a uh, right angle triangle. This angle here, the top of it is a right angle. So we'll, hopefully this won't be too small. If it is, I'll just have to put a couple together. But I'm going to start by extruding that and I'm going to start with my pink and I'm using my Macon's extruder and I need to spin that out a little bit more. This is probably way more clay than will fit in the extruder, but I will do as much as I can just so I won't be short any. Make sure it's thin enough to go into your extruder. Oh, I got the whole thing in. I had to push a little bit, but I got it in there. Now you can probably see the die a little bit better. But I'm going to extrude this. To get these out of the way because I'll probably need lots of space for this. And where is my gripper? I used it for texture and now I don't know where it is probably underneath something over here. So I'm just going to use my little heart that I use for texture and use that to hold. It's just easier to grip this way. And I'm just going to extrude. It would be easier if I held it this way. There we go. And I'm probably not going to need all of this. But I'm going to extrude it anyway. And what I don't use, I will just ball up and put back in my scrap pile. This is another way that I'm going to use up some of my scrap. This is going to be way more than I need. I think I, I, think I lied. I'm not going to do all of it. Some of it's kinked. When That's one thing about the Macon's extruder. When you stop and start, 
you kind of get a little kink in your extrusion. So I'm just going to cut that part off. I do believe I'm going to have plenty. And this part. And I'm just going to lay these out on my mat. I'm going to back, well, I'm not going to back this out. I'm going to pull this off, get my extruder die off. And I'm going to just finish extruding and get the rest of this out. There we go. So I'm probably not going to need all of this green either. But this is a good way to use up some scrap. Look at this. In cutting them, look at this. Isn't that the neatest looking scrap? It's, you know, even got little holes in it so it looks like stone. I just love that. I'm going to have to think of some way to use that. But right now I'm worried about thinking about my quilt. Put this back in, and I will extrude the green. This one, it was a little bit smaller than the pink. Let me go ahead and take this off because I'm afraid the it'll pull the disc back with it. And you might have some clay stuck to it, which is okay. You can just peel it off. And then roll it back down. But anyway, before I do that, I want to go ahead and stretch this out. And lay it on the flat side. And I'm just going to cut it at the end of my cuttings board. How is this cutting mat working for you guys? Is this working okay? Because it sure helps me a lot not having to worry about measuring with a ruler because this mat has a grid on it that really works well for me. And I explained in my last video I'm going to leave this just in case I need it. I don't think I will. I'm going to line that up there. Then I'm going to do my white. But you can see it's got it's got different grids on here. It's got um, it's measured by inches. And then it also has paper sizes on here too if you're working with paper. It's really a nice mat. This one is made by Walnut Hollow and they don't make them anymore. But We Are Memory Keepers does make one that's really nice. So if you're in the market for a glass mat, I do have them on my Amazon Influencer page. So check them out. It's really a great thing to work on. Because you can cut on this. You can just take alcohol and clean it off and just keep on going. It's really nice. So now I'm going to do my white. Now I drew a diagram. I'll show you the diagram when I finish. But I haven't put one of these together yet so it's going to be a challenge for me to see if I can get all this together. the way it's supposed to look. I meant to print off a picture, but I'll do, I'll add one, but um, matter of fact, I'll add one right here. And 
that's a picture of what the pinwheel quilt block looks like. And of course, that one was with fabric. And I'll just lay this aside. But I have this diagram that I drew. Oh, actually, here. But I drew it out this way. And I need a white and a color. I named it color A. And then I need color B and then some white on the side. And I need four of each one of those. So that's why I did the sheet, because I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go until I start putting it together. So I think I'll just go ahead and trim this at 12 inches, trim all of them at 12 inches. This one I'll trim even with the other one. I don't think I'll need this one, but I'll keep it just in case. So I need four. Let me do the pink as color A. So let me trim those off at 12 inches. See how much easier this is when you don't have to get out a ruler? Set them at the 12 inch mark. And I need four, so I'm going to cut this at six inches. So there's four of those. And same with the white. I need four, so I'm going to cut this at six inches. And what I'm going to do, let me look at my diagram here. I need the small points meeting together. So let me take this one and this one. And you can see my small points and put them together. That looks a little thin, doesn't it? We'll put them together and just let them meet all the way down and try to keep them straight because as we slice this So there's our first triangle. I need four like this. So I'm going to pause the camera while I put the other four together. Okay, I've got my four. See how, well that's not a very good one. I have to trim the end off so you can see what it looks like. Just trim off a little piece. But see, there's the first triangle. You took, I took two triangles and made one big triangle out of it. Now, I need four of these other color canes. I say green, but it's really a green, blue, and pink combination. And if you look at this, this needs to be have the triangle, but then a piece of white on the end in order to make another big triangle. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet. Okay, what I did, I kind of did this off camera. I forgot to turn the camera back on. In looking at my diagram...
this piece looks like a trapezoid with one end cut off. So I found a trapezoid die and I'm going to die I'm going to cut this and cut one side off and hope that that works. And I'll just do a small piece first before I extrude the whole thing. I'll just extrude this much and I have this extra piece that I was not going to be using, so I'll use it as a sample. And let's see. Let me look at my diagram again. The wide part goes out this way. If I put this up to there, cut this piece off so I don't have such a long tail hanging. See, it goes on this side. And put that there. Then all I need to do is cut off this piece. I think it's going to work. You've just watched me problem solve. And there's my th other triangle. Can you see it? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extrude, hopefully, enough to cut four pieces. If not, I may have to do a separate extrusion because I don't... This one's going to take more clay because it's a bigger die. So this probably isn't going to be enough for all four. But maybe I can get 12 inches out of it and then I will do another one. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, I've finished three of them, but thought I would do the last one on camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up straight on my grid and make sure it's stuck to my grid it's a little hump right there there we go so that's straight on my grid then I'm going to take my triangle my colored triangle now yours can be another color mine happens to be green and what you want is you want to look at your triangle. Here's the long side, and then this side is what goes against the white. And you want this to go right where the white starts to bend at that angle, and you match it up all the way down. And the reason I want it straight is because I have to cut and it's easier to cut if you've got it straight. Now you can feel with your fingers. I don't even have to look. But I can feel whether this is straight. Sorry if the hair showed up. And then once you're sure it's on there straight or you can do it a little at a time like I'm doing is make sure you stick these two together so if everything is straight when you get it on here then this here should be straight and this looks like it's not right there which means the green is moved over just a little bit but just make sure it's good and stuck together then you can come back and just go straight down and I'm going to do this in sections because doing it with this long blade is not easy so I'm just going to cut straight down and 
and then you do the rest, cut straight down. And my green stretched a little bit as I was attaching it, which is okay, it's no big deal. Then you can go back and pinch just to make sure that these two are together. But then there's this. This makes another big triangle. So I've got all four. Let me see. I'm trying to get them all in the same orientation so I don't get myself confused. I'm putting the white on the top side. And again, these need to be trimmed a little bit. This one I didn't trim. But they're all going to be a little bit different lengths anyway, just because you've been manipulating them. Now we start the fun part, which is putting them together. So let me go look at my instructions, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have to admit that... Um, I had hesitated to print this off. This is the directions that I was using. And I'm just making one block. I didn't make two different color blocks. But this is called the Spring Pinwheel. <coughs> and it's from Quick and Easy Quilting Magazine, April 2002, pages 16 through 18. And this was online. It was published online. So I... I didn't print it because I am on a, <coughs> excuse me, a printing plan. When I bought my new printer, it's an HP printer, and they have what's called instant ink, and maybe some of you are aware of that. And but like instead of buying ink from my printer, um, I pay two ninety nine a month, and I can print fifty copies, and. Um, when my machine gets low on ink, it communicates with HP and lets them know, and they send me a replacement before it's time for it. So it's worked out pretty well, except this month I'm doing a de-stash of my, uh, card, my uh, rubber stamps and dies and put them on eBay. And I've been doing a lot of shipping, and um, I've only got three more copies I can print until the, after the 14th. And this is only the 11th, 11th, whatever the day is. But anyway, I didn't want to go over my copies because then it cost you more. So I was just trying to not print, but I figured I really needed to. And I only printed this one page. But this is what we're aiming for, this right here. That's our pinwheel. So I needed to see how to put these together. So if I start... Let me fold this so I have room for it on my table. If I start with, I'll just use the green as my blue color on this, this thing. So this one would go like this. And this one goes like... other way like this is that right yeah I think that's right so let me line this up all the way down and the reason I made this six inches long is because I intend to cut it and turn it into a you know a bigger cane but you don't have to leave yours at six inches you can cut it to any length you want that's easiest for you to work with I'm gonna lay it down find a flat spot and try to 
get this together because this diagram is for fabric that's sewn together. But this should make a square, which it appears to have done, much to my amazement. So there's our first square here. Now I'm going to put this one up next to it. And this time, you have to be careful which end you pick up because it's this little point's got to be going in the right direction. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to match this all the way down. forgot which way I was doing it. This, I don't know which end it was. Green, blue. Alright, this one. And then I'll take the red and pink and that goes and the white needs to be on the outside. Pointed this way with the white on the outside and that matches up here. Actually, I think I'll put these together separately. Leave that one because this way, that way, I can make sure these end up being square. And I'm bringing this pink all the way to the edge of the green. Like I say, it might be easier for you to do these in shorter sections. But now that I've got those two together, I can make sure that they're square. Just squeezing it a little bit. Alright, so this is the second one. I can now put these together, I think. And you can lay these down because these are square. It's easier to put them together if they're square. Now there's the top half of our cane. Alright, so now I'm going to put together this square, which the green, it goes, no, it goes the other, other way, this way. See, I'm looking at this right here, and that's this right here. I'm going to set that down, and I'm going to take this one, and the yellow on here is actually the pink. So what I want is the white on the outside. And it goes up against, is that right? No, let me do it this way. Don't come apart on me. I got, I did, I had them both upside down, no wonder. There we go. Now the pink and the green do not match up. Don't worry about that, because you, you see, look on the diagram. They don't match up here either. So the object is to create a square.
This one doesn't seem to be quite as square, so I'm just going to roll this a little bit with my rod. Not enough to stretch it, but just enough to flatten it out a little bit. And then I'll roll this one. But this will make sure, that, and these are six inches, so these will make sure that this gets square. And then just turn it. There we go. I can pretty, be pretty sure that this is square. Now the last one is this block right here. So I need the green to be like this. The point of the white pointing down. And then the pink and the white this way, and this should make a square. That's the way it goes, which I think is the way I had it, if I'm not mistaken. But for some reason it didn't come out square. But it's square now. Then I'll put these two together. This way and I'm so confused. I don't know what I've done. It's just not the way it was supposed to be. I should have written down colors on here so I could keep track of what's what. This one This one, the straight, the white, straight white goes on the outside, so it goes this way. And then the straight white I think that's it I'm sorry folks this has been much harder than I thought it would be Let's see what we've got. So I'm going to cut it in the middle. It does look like a pinwheel. And I can put them together. Now you'll see why I wanted to do them in six inch lengths. There's a little bit of space there in the middle, so I'm just trying to close that up. Because now, let me even this up so I can see how much I have to cut. Just making sure that everything's stuck together. So 
So now this is not quite four inches, so I'm just going to stretch it a little bit to make it four inches so that I can have an even two inch cane. Or actually, this is three inches. I'm trying to get it to three inches. Because I trimmed off some of the bad ends. So let me just line that up and I'll cut on the inch and a half side. What a surprise! And you'll see these center holes will disappear after you compress. See they disappeared in there but there's our pinwheel square. And I will wrap this in white after I make sure I get this air out of it. Maybe I'll just roll it. Just keep pressing in the center all, all the way around. And you'll get that hole filled in. What I'm going to do is roll it flat. He, whoops. Picked up something with my roller. It's one of the problems with only having limited space. Make sure this is flat, make sure this is flat, and close in that little center place. Now that both of these are flat, they should go back together with no hole in the middle. There you go. Now I will uh, wrap this in white. I'm going to put just a little... Let me take the scraps that I have already cut and I'm going to run them through the pasta machine and then I'll be right back. Okay, I have rolled out the leftover white to a number three. Yep, I'll have plenty. So let me, here I will use a ruler just to cut a straight edge. Because it's longer than my six inches. And set this on here. And mark where I want to cut that one. Got that little piece of white right there. There it goes. Didn't want to come off. And I'm going to trim up this end so it's straight. Maybe I better not trim that one yet, just to make sure that it's going to fit. And I'm going to start at a corner. And go around. I have plenty. And there you go. There is our uh, 
this was called a spring pinwheel, but I think the spring was because of the colors they used in their thing. But this is the pinwheel design. So this is going to be our quilt square number two. I still have that little hole in the middle, but if I reduce this just a little bit, it'll take care of that. But this is our quilt square number two. Sorry for all the fumbling. This was not as easy as I thought it was once I started putting things together. Maybe you have an easier way. And I am going to fix that hole. But anyway, there you go. Quilt square number two, the pinwheel. So come back again next, well, next week I'll have another tutorial. I also have a, an announcement I need to make, but I'm going to wait a little while before I make that announcement. But it's, I'm excited. It's something that I think you will all enjoy, and I'm just real excited about it. But I will be back again next week with another polymer clay tutorial. And come back on Friday, maybe by Friday, for my Friday Frolics, I will have all the information for you from your, for the um, announcement that I need to make. So, have a great day. Come back again soon. Bye-bye.